Brick Maniacs. It's time for another episode of Brick, Brick Mania, Mania TV. TV. Cool, welcome back, Brick Maniacs. Uh, we have the X-15 rocket plane today on Brick Mania TV. We do. And um, where do you want to begin? I want to begin by saying this is super cool. Look at it, cool, <laughs> it's, it's awesome. It's a sweet I, I am hypersonic. honored and proud to have uh, been given this opportunity yeah. to do this. I mean, it's, it's really cool, it's iconic, and it actually still holds world records for speed and height. That's awesome. Um, yeah, it went like, over 6.7 Mach, that's past the speed of sound. It's nuts. So the, the X program was to um, discover, you know, various different uh, things, you know, so they had to have different science experiments on um, speed, how fast they could go, what would happen to the airplane, what would happen to the pilot, uh, the X-15 specifically for uh, leaving the Earth's atmosphere and right. re-entry with the heat and, uh, you know, they had to make new materials to be able to withstand that. Um, they weren't all successful. They had some explosions and some crashes and stuff. Stuff. But um, it was definitely overall the program was successful. Um, they discovered a lot. Right. And I discovered a lot researching this. Absolutely. It was really cool. It's a cool model. Um, I can show you all kinds of fun right. stuff as examples. Uh, yeah. Um, any other, I mean, I guess before we get into the model, um, any other historical things or? Uh... Yeah. Um, so uh, one cool thing about this, you'll have, you know, uh, top and bottom of these fins, you have these air brakes. Sure. And you know, I, I looked at that and I'm like, okay, they use that, you know, for landing to slow down, right? But they actually even used it um, <clears throat> in flight to regulate the speed. Right. Because once they basically hit the power to go, they were just going faster and faster and faster until they burned out all the fuel and then they would actually glide down to land. Mm -hmm. So once the fuel is gone, it's done. So if they didn't want to reach the speed of, you know, six and a half, uh, you know, Mach past, you know, the speed of sound. So hyper, hypersonic is basically uh, Mach 5 or above. Um, supersonic would be basically getting to the uh, speed of sound, which right. would be the X1. Um, so in order to regulate it, so it won't go too fast because they're still kind of building up the test and all that. Right. They use the air brakes in flight to kind of keep it around Mach 2. Okay, <laughs> oh, just, just around Mach yeah. 2. So. And you would think some of these flights that go so fast, whatever, it could like, you know, zoom around the earth a couple times, whatever. These flights were actually not that long. Right. It was just, you know, they, they had all these like test points, or not yeah. test points, but um, uh, monitoring stations along the way. So basically, they'd bring it up, uh, attach it to a B-52, mm -hmm. get it up to about 500 miles an hour, and then if everything looked good, they'd hit that release button and drop it, turn on the rocket, and then, it would basically uh, do an incline, right. get up to speed, um, and then, you know, little by little with each test flight, they went a little higher, a little faster, right. and basically just up, use the fuel, and then down. But while they were doing that, every second was monitored, and they had all these different science experiments. I discovered that, like, right behind here, as it got up, like, above there's atmosphere, like a thing would open up, it would pop out, and they had in the back and on the sides, like, all these little experiments that was just, get these readings and stuff. So and if it's able to space. deploy equipment, that's, it's above, it's it's not necessarily wind resisting anymore at that point, or, or is it that high up, or? or? I mean, it was going <laughs> like mock, you know, it's like can, a, uh, going the speed of sound, whatever, however they figured out with each sure. test flight. Um, and they actually had three of these. Um, so they would, like one, while one was flying, they're like preparing the second one. Sure. Um, they had, uh, I think it was 199 f overall flights and uh, many different pilots, uh, different test pilots, I mean, Neil Armstrong, uh, John Glenn. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had a, a whole bunch of pilots. Right. And 
um, each one of them, they just had one more experiment to do. For every time that an engine exploded or something, or they thought it was, and they'd go back and review the footage and fix something, and you would think it's this big catastrophe, but they brought it back in the shop, fixed it up, good as new, five weeks later it right. was off and going. And they just kept improving it and kept improving it. Um, there were other X aircraft part of the program which accomplished other things um, but yeah do some research cool. also there's, and there's there, more there is a, a crazy amount of history to all this so. yeah so the first engine that they used while they were waiting for this big one I'll just turn it here sure so you can see this big engine um, they were waiting for that one to start but they had these engines from the X1 and I actually have these yeah. printed tiles from the uh, from the X1 that we did. Mm -hmm. So that was the orange plane. That's the one that broke, you know, the sound barrier that went past the speed of sound, right. Mach 1. So obviously they weren't in orange. But I didn't include it in the kit, but um, just as an example, like if you put these on here, I mean, that's something what it looked like for like the first couple of flights. Sure. It had these, you know, eight engines, or basically two of them. The X1 had one of these set of four. And they used that for testing, and it was working fine. And they're like, "Okay, we got all our tests going good. When, when's the next engine ready?" You know, and they got nice. that, ran some tests on it, and then they got that going. Now, um, in flight, I discovered this last night, which is kind of cool. When I was making this, I was wondering because I saw pictures of the bottom fin. Mm -hmm. um, you have the dorsal and the ventral, right? Right. And I saw that it was like almost like as tall as the top one. I'm like, how is this thing gonna land? These skids don't even, yeah, the back had skids, it didn't have wheels. Right. So how's <laughs> Which this is thing, terrifying. So yeah. like, <laughs> like how's this thing gonna land that actually should be like that? Right. And it would, there's no way, right? And so I ended up making it like this so it could land because I saw some other pictures like that. And then last night, mm -hmm. I was here pretty late and I was some stuff ready, like a next kit, but what happens is there's a, a chase aircraft flying by it. All right. And it would let him know, like, fuel's expended, he's ready to basically land. And then he would basically jettison the, <laughs> the bottom so that he could land. And it would pretty much just have its own little parachute. Uh, own little parachute. <laughs> and get that to stick. Yeah. So he's flying along, and the chase aircraft say, okay, ready to, you know, jettison the, whenever you want, ready to go. Psh, okay. And that thing would just wee. <laughs> Parachute down, and they would catch it. And now, now it can land. Now, exactly, there we go. the bottom thing could land. I'll do it this way for the camera, uh, and it would hit the skids. And as soon as it would hit that, boom, it would land. And actually, when they first did that, sometimes it hit so hard, the it would just collapse. It would, yeah. it would break right there. That doesn't and they'd have a crash, and they're like, okay, we have to improve the landing gear, and we got to make the frame stronger, and all that. And right. they would go. So each crash and blow up, whatever, wasn't for nothing. They learned a lot from it and they just improved and kept it going. Anyway, I can go on and on. Cool, no, that's cool. Let's get this done. Um, what else? Um, what else? So, um, along with it, I actually provided some um, ground gear equipment. Cool. And it comes with this nice little stand nice. to match your other one. Um, what else? Okay, so the landing gear does go up. Of course, you're gonna wanna see that. I'll take out the minifig while I'm putting the landing gear up. You can check out this pilot, which yeah, sure. you can show that off. Cool, this is a basic um, just suit here. We've got, front print, we've got front printing on this guy, and we've got some arm printing with that NASA logo right there. Um, I have a bit of a simulated texture. Um, it's a pretty, it was a really simple suit. Um, just, I don't know what exactly what that material was made out of, but it kind of looked like tinfoil. <laughs> right. <laughs> so these guys just looked like big baked potatoes in there, so. <laughs> well, I think they discovered that these guys are actually gonna be going, like, partially way into space. Right. And they actually needed a space suit. It's pretty much a space suit. So they had to get them all ready, whatever, to, uh, a part of, part of the X-15 program was to um, evaluate not only the aircraft, but the pilots also, mm -hmm. what, you know, what would happen to them on leaving the Earth's atmosphere and re-entry, um, and part of that was using these suits, and I guess they already had suits from, uh, I guess, the Friendship 7 and stuff, so they were like, hey, let's they use them. They took what they learned from that and applied to Exactly, this. we'll give them a little air conditioning and all that. Right. So, they, it's, it's funny, because they 
they put them on sleds and they do them outdoors, like just shooting them, <laughs> them down, down a rail just to see what the effects would right. be and ejection seat and parachute and all that. Um, Speaking of ejection seats, yep. we got some nice printing on yeah, here. Yeah, some custom printing on the side of this. Uh, so the X-15 is printed, then there's some rescue information, there's an ejection seat. Um, the US Air, For yeah, U.S. Air Force is printed on the side of this as well, and the uh, U.S. Roundel right there. So that's a bunch of printed stuff in this model. Yeah. And then we got a few stickers on this. So the USAF on the wings, and the, again, the uh, stars and bars there. And in the back, you have the NASA and um, the numbers there. And we included this really nice sticker sheet. Um, so you have options. They had the three different planes, and it went, uh, I think the record was broken in uh, 1959, uh, ended, I think, in 1968. But throughout that time, the three different uh, aircraft, they all went through a number of changes. Right. But um, you know, maybe sometimes you'll see pictures that have yellow NASA on it. Sometimes the sticker are closer to the front of the tail. Sometimes they're middle. Sometimes a little higher. Um, so you could choose from those stickers which aircraft you want to show. Cool. Um, yeah, we gave, we gave you options, but the um, there are some printed tiles and stuff on here, which came out really nice. I'm really happy with that. So there it is, closed up. Cool. Landing gear. Oh, and then we have the landing gear when it comes down. These yes. can go on it, which you'll see in the box. You want me to pull that out now or no? Sure. Yeah, go for it. All right. Let's see what this does. Let me get my finger they're, right tucked, they're tucked way in there. Oh, secret tricks. Open up the yes. uh, cockpit can canopy. Push it down. We have tools. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we do have a tool. There we go. Perfect. There. So, so obviously the, opening a uh, cockpit on that, that's cool. Um, I like that shield up to on top or whatever this piece is. Yeah, the, uh, piece. yeah, Lego's got some, you know, new pieces. Sure. Um, yeah, as soon as some new pieces come out and we see them, we we get all excited about it. We're like, okay, that piece is new, but does it come in a color we need? Right. Does it come for you know? I've got a project that piece would be perfect. You know, we see the we try and see potential in all these pieces, and um, that was when I started. I think it's like in. Nexo Knights, they're like these different shield things, but trans orange color wouldn't really work. Right. This. <laughs> so now they're finally coming out and uh, useful for our application colors. Yes, and I, I knew that's where that had to go. Yeah. So you got the tail, and you got the one on the front. Uh, for you guys at home, if you wanted to make a little tractor to pull that, you can do it. Uh, I made this. I made this little struts. extra piece in the front just so that if you are going to pull it, um, it won't collapse the wheel. Oh, cool. That didn't come with the real thing, but that's there for that. Cool. Yeah. So this would be great to make your own um, runway diorama where they're loading this up on to the underside of the other airplane, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. if you happen to make a B-52 <laughs> <That'd be awesome. laughs> to scale, this is 135th scale to match, you know, all other stuff. Cool. That we make. Uh, full color instructions as usual. Um, Cool yep. stuff here. Shows the sticker placement. Everything. And is that it? Is that it? There's so much more There's about so much this, more. but we, <laughs> we can't. You know. All right, that is the X15. For more information, check out brickmania.com. Thank you very much for watching.